Hi, I'm Stephen Head from Archery Supply. Today we're going to look at the RPM Striker Bow. Now what makes this bow different to other lever bows is there's no cam system. It's using the complete lever here to lever this power limb here to build poundage. So with a normal compound bow you have an idler and wheel at the top and a wheel at the bottom or an idler wheel at the top and a wheel at the bottom and those wheels basically lever the lever mechanically force those limbs together to build poundage and to build strength and to shoot an arrow. With a lever system it's using this here to lever this limb so the limbs much shorter than a normal bow. Now what makes these bows unique besides this this limb here is you can shoot them with fingers you can't derail one of these bows so with a normal bow if you twist your hand like so with cams you can pull the string straight off the cam system if you torque the bow on a normal bow like so you can pull the cam the string straight off the cam and wreck the bow with these bows you can't they're basically bulletproof and I say that, still don't shoot the bow without an arrow. If you shoot the bow without the arrow, you will tear these lip, limb tips off. Um, and you'll probably claim you didn't shoot it without an arrow, but you shot it without an arrow. Um, so the normal Anida bows have a cam system down here. Now the original owner of Anida, his son, back when I was 25, designed this bow. And when I say this bow, this design of a bow. And it was called Discovery. And at the time, from, my, from what I remember from when I was 25, is the bow was quite expensive, it wasn't very fast, and I questioned where it would sit in the market at, the, at its price point. I suppose the bow lasted about, I'm going to say three years, and it wasn't, greatly, it wasn't hugely successful, um, and it was basically dropped. Now, 25 years on, I'm guessing the patents run out, and I'm not saying anything about patents with this bow. Um, RPM have re-brought out the design and they obviously saw it years ago and here it is. So you've got these two yoke systems here, um, quite simple, cable guard here. Now the problem with the cable guard being so low, you can't fit a whisker biscuit arrow rest. And in fact, most arrow rests you're going to fit, you're going to have problems because of this um, cable guard, which is used to pull the cables out of the way. So in fact, I've just fitted a screw on arrow rest and Probably one of the common questions I'm going to get with this bow is which, which arrow rest can I fit to it? And you can see with the bar being right here, right where the um, Allen key, where the screw, arrow rest screw is on, you're going to have a problem fitting lots of arrow rest to this bow, which is why I've fitted a very simple arrow rest to this bow. Now who's going to want one of these bows? Um, anyone who's bow fishing, because they shoot with fingers generally, um, the specs on this bow um, is 26.5 inches to 28.5 and maximum of 50 pounds. Now the 50 pounds is at 0% let off. So when you drop the let off, so when you decrease the let off, increase the let off, increase the let off and make, the, make it like 60% let off, you drop the poundage also. And this bow will probably drop back to around a 35, 40 pound bow with let off. Now you've got stops here, so you basically move this up or down to stop it on the limb. Um, you can change the let off and poundage with this bow by moving these to here and this one to the different spots here and here. Um, now I'm not going to do that. Now to replace the string on one of these, you can wind the bow down. Um, or when you pull the bow back, as I'm going to show, so we're going to pull this bow back. When you pull it back, you can actually put the bow in between um, like two pins. So drill, um, get a bit of dowel, stick it into a board and pull it back and, and put it in between the board and you can just change the string. Um, so a bit about this bow, the RPMs um, on the Nitro had silver limb pockets, which I thought looked pretty average. Black limb pockets, a huge thumbs up in my opinion. It looks like a well-made bow, um, all metal here, metal parts all through here. It looks nice. Um, the question is, what does it shoot like? Now it's been 25 years since I've shot one of these and I can honestly say I can't remember it and I think at the time it didn't really impress me that much because I never physically brought one from my store. So to the best of my knowledge there was none brought into Australia. Um, 
Now I'm going to say these sight things here, this is a bit of a problem. If you're going to fit a normal hunting sight to the bow, you can see they're little dimples. Um, if it's not flat on the back, these will push in and it'll basically offset the sight. So just be careful when you're fitting a sight to one of, one of these bows. Now it's reported to be 3.1 pounds of mass weight. It feels closer to 4 pounds to me. Now I would normally shoot um, a bow through a chronograph and all that sort of stuff but because this is 50 pounds and it's 28 and a half inches I think I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to have a shot and see what it feels like to shoot. I'm not going to, to shoot groups with it. Maybe I should um, because it had no let off. So I'm like well you know I kind of don't know what to do with that if I if I had let off to it then the poundage drops um, to yeah like a 40 pound bow maybe I should show you how to do that um, but I thought for this video we'll just have a shot and see what we think of it now this bow is about a hundred dollars cheaper than the nitro um, so it probably appeals to someone who's wants a purely purely a fishing bow uh, because you don't need high poundage for fishing um, and it probably appeals to someone who wants something different this is a very different bow there's no other there's no other bow like this um, that's unique and it will be it will go down as one of those unique bows in archery design so let's just have a shot so when I'm drawing it back here it's all soft so it feels like about I don't know, 20 30 pound it's not peaking out till I get back here at the at the what they say it's 50 pounds it may not be 50 but it's it's building it feels very much like a recurve but it feels softer at the start so if you've got a 50 pound recurve and this this feels softer at the start to a 50 pound recurve um, and then it's building up but it feels very much like a recurve um, and how a recurve stacks at the end this doesn't feel like it's stacking although it's building weight at the end so that was a terrible shot it's quiet kind of i didn't know how i was going shooting see i've got no knocking points on here um and i almost missed the target so uh, <laughs> So it's quiet, it's smooth for fingers, it feels pretty good. So when it comes to finger shooting bows on the market, there's a Hoyt bow which is long, which is suitable for fingers. So for fingers, you're generally looking for a longer bow, you're looking for low let off because you don't want to torque the string off the off the bow. To me this bow feels good for fingers because I know I can't do any of that stuff. Um, the bow feels quiet. Um, it's definitely unique. And you and you want to shoot gloves with it because it's killing my fingers at 50 odd pounds. Um, it's gentle on my shoulders. I'm not really feeling the poundage at 50 pounds. Um, there's no vibration at all in the bow. It's um, in many respects, if I compare this to the normal nitro or the igniters of the past, it feels quieter, feels less vibration, feels slower. I'm going to say it feels slower and maybe faster, I don't know, but feels slower. Um, feels better off the fingers because you've got no let off. Um, with the igniters, you've got let off. So when you get back here, it's 10 pounds and it's very hard to let go of something, which is 10 pounds. So it feels more like a recurve to shoot. So it's kind of a blend of a compound and recurve. Um, I like the fact it's so simple. Um, you know, very little moving parts, just one hinge. Um, so overall, these things are good for when you wind it in and out. It makes life easier. 
uh, you're less likely to strip out the riser. So overall the grip feels pretty comfortable. Um, a lot of the Oneidas had big chunky grips because they have, they've got the cables running through the center here. This doesn't, it's, it's simple. Um, now what I'm going to say, if you're shooting with fingers, and let's say you want to shoot target with this, when you shoot with fingers the arrow comes away from the bow, so spine is important. With, especially if you're shooting fingers. Um, overall, I like the bow to shoot. Price point on this bow, I think in Australia, is about $750, which puts it above beginner bows um, in price. But this is a machine riser, machine limb pockets, and it's that's a pretty nice bow to shoot. Now, when you compare other machined riser bows, they generally are more expensive. So. I think the price point on this is good in the market. I just don't know where it's going to sit in the market as far as who's going to want to buy this bow for a general archery bow. Um, so the people I think will buy this is people who want to shoot bare bow. Because um, 50 is enough with no let off. Somebody who wants to shoot fingers would be right into this bow fishing. Um, somebody's looking for sim simple. Like somebody's wanting simple, someone wanting different will be over the RPM striker. Um, so overall, I think it's pretty good. These things, um, they feel like metal. Um, I think it's a pretty cool bow and it's very different. And, you know, when I've been reviewing bows in the past and seeing bows in the past, this is definitely one of the most unique bows I think that has been made. Um, obviously, a NIDA has got a unique bow. The Bear Delta V is a unique bow. I think this is one of the unique bows. Um, and obviously, you've missed the Martin Diner, Diner bow with the cam at the bottom and recurve string at the top is a unique bow. But this is one of the unique bows ever made. And it's worth sort of checking out if you kind of like things which are different. I don't like the sharp edges, I'd like it to be curved, um, like these edges here are sharp, this edge here is sharp, I'd like it, I'd like it rounded, that's just a styling thing, um, overall pretty cool, um, so the things I'd like to see different, I'd like to see something about this cable guard here, I don't know how you fix it, so you can fit a normal RS like a whisker biscuit to it. Um, but overall it's pretty good. I don't know if an, I don't know if RPM is still making these bows, so you'd have to check. Um, but overall it's pretty good. Now with with these bows, if you want to quieten them, um, wool puff silencers. Some people put stuff here, you can put um, deadening things here on the string, but like I said, this bow's pretty good. Um, there's also stuff you can put on the back side of the limb here, like there's rubber things now produced, I think from OMP, which stick on the back here, little bits of rubber that will take away some of the noise. Cat's whiskers on these cables, but overall it's, it's one of the quieter bows I've ever shot. I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies, that's the RPM Striker, check it out at your local archery shop, thanks for watching.